proudly presents the Milwaukee Road in the Bitterroot Mountains, a simulation in Oran's TRS. One of the most spectacular portions of Milwaukee Road's transcontinental mainline cross the Bitterroot Mountains between St. Rachel's, Montana and Avery, Idaho. The line itself has been abandoned in 1980, but virtual reality now opens the possibility to get a little imagination of the once mighty Milwaukee Road. You can jump behind the control of a box cap electric, moving a freight train. or operate the legendary Olympian Hiawatha transcontinental passenger train along Milwaukee Road's main line by either Quill Drive Electric or Airy Build Diesel Power. Also a train travel as a passenger inside a coach, a sleeper, in a Superdome coach or on the famous Skytop Lounge car is possible. Locking trucker can pick up logs beside St. Joe River and carry it down to Avery, where a Milwaukee Road train awaits its load. Or take a speeder and run the tracks for inspection or fire control. And last but not least, listen to the sound of the powerful Little Joes, together as a tandem unit providing over 10,000 horsepower, or in combination with the SD40-2 diesels by common practice in the last years of electrification at the Milwaukee Road. Since the simulation reached up over Lookout Pass, it is also possible to witness a train rolling through Mullen, Idaho, at Burlington Northern's ex Northern Pacific's Lookout Pass line. But for now you may sit back and watch this little demonstration of train traffic over the Billroot Mountains, as it was more than three decades ago. Now a heavy freight train, led by three SD40-2 diesel locomotives from Washington State, approaches Avery beside St. Joe River. The train crosses Avery maintenance yards, the turntable and roundhouse, the big shed and the sand tower before it reaches Avery Depot. Since the main line between Avery, Idaho and Otello, Washington have never been electrified, all trains were pulled by either steam and diesel power between Montana and Coast Division. The three SD40-2 diesels crosses under the road bridge and slows down for the stop at Avery. Little Joe EF4 number E75 awaits its train in front of substation number 14 at Avery and moves backward to get in front of the train. Safe behind the fans? The photographer is capturing the drama as the driver switches the control up into the 16th notch and the power units accelerate the train of 130 heavy loaded cars. Eastbound rolls along the Avery Yard. E78 leads the pack eastbound out of Avery, past the yard throat, and under the highway bridge at the east end of town. Now the train bends into the valley of North Fork of St. Joe River, out of Avery. After a slowdown to allow a boost crew change back at Avery, the train accelerates into the steep mountainous terrain up to Stetson, Kiley, Falcon, Adair, Rowland and St. Paul Pass. The end of the train now walks beside the fire patrol speeder shed, moves under the road bridge and leaves Avery. The train goes through the curves along St. Joe River and comes to tunnel number 36, a little east of Avery. 
We have been climbing a 1.7% grade since we left Avery, which will continue to roll it. The train now crosses Stetson Bridge, a 9-span girder steel trestle, the first of 10 trestles on the way up to St. Paul Pass. Coming of Stetson Bridge, the train continues heading east at the south side of St. Joe River. Just out of tunnel number 32, the train crosses Big Dick Creek Trestle and negotiates no shelf. The eastbound now crosses the siding of Falcon, Idaho, as well as Roland. Falcon once had a lot of steam train maintenance equipment here, but it all became obsolete after the electrification was completed in 1915. Now the train goes into tunnel number 28, out of Falcon, Idaho, and soon after into tunnel number 27 nearby. The train moves out of snowsheds at tunnel number 27 and approaches the 13 girder span steel trestle at Clark Creek. The power unit leads the train across the trestle and continues into the Loop Creek Valley. Up the hill at the north side of Loop Creek in the background appears tunnel number 23 and 24 as well as a small creek trestle, while the train moves over Big Beer Creek trestle at the south side of Loop Creek. The skiing views Russell Creek trestle and the train crossing it, while Barnes Creek trestle and the rock face nearby appears uphill in the background. The end of the train crosses Beer Creek trestle and the upper loop track can be clearly seen at the north side of Loop Creek. The photographer of use from up Kelly Creek Trestle down to Turkey Creek Trestle crossed by the train now, which makes its way up Loop Creek Canyon south side. Out of tunnel number 26, the train crosses Loop Creek Road and dives into tunnel number 25. The train passes through the tunnels 26 and 25 and crosses the siding of Adair Loop. Between Turkey Creek and Kelly Creek Trestle, the train travels about 2 miles and takes almost 115 feet of elevation. Now the train crosses the 850 foot long Kelly Creek Viaduct, number DD220. Kelly Creek Trestle is the largest viaduct of Rocky Mountains Division and the highest bridge at the Milwaukee Road. The power now rolls in front of Johnson's Big Cut and crosses Barnes Creek Trestle. The rock face got its name during construction of the Milwaukee Road. A contractor named Johnson needed to blast its way through the rock nearby Barnes Creek. 25,000 pounds of explosive powder have been touched off and a gigantic blast threw tons of rock and coarse ice boulders down the valley and onto excavation camp number one. Nobody has been killed or seriously injured, but half of the camp was smashed. E75 crosses small creek trestle at milepost 1754.5 and gets into tunnel number 24. The train emerges from tunnel number 24 and continues at the gap to tunnel number 23 at milepost 1754.4. The caboose passes Johnson's Big Cut and enters Barnes Creek Trestle. 
Then it crosses Small Creek Trestle and follows the train through tunnel number 24. Now the train have made all the way from Avery over the 1.7% grade up to St. Paul Pass and enters tunnel number 20, dividing Montana and Idaho. The tank cars, the heavy loaded bulkhead flat cars, the containers and the caboose follows the train into the 6,771 foot long St. Paul Pass Tunnel. Exiting St. Paul Pass Tunnel at East Portal, the power units did its job at a steep grade and the Joe goes into the regenerative braking mode, putting the downhill energy of the train back into the trolley and automatically to another train, auto maintainer power. Substation number 13, located at East Portal, milepost 7049, equipped with three 2000 kW capacity motor generator sets, was Milwaukee Road's largest and most powerful substation until 1955 when substation number 6 at Janey was upgraded for more power supply at Pipestone Pass. Now the train crosses Salty's trestle, a 13 girder span steel trestle which remains in our days like all other Milwaukee Road trestles in the Bitterroot Mountains. It can be clearly seen from Interstate 90 at Salty's exit. The train speeds through Haugen where box cap helper number E29 is waiting for its next service. E75 leads its train through a long curve, about one and a half miles east of Haugen, before it crosses Sandwiches River at the little bridge. The train now enters Henderson. And crosses once again Sandwiches River. The line follows the river south side until St. Regis where St. Rachel's River flows into Clark Fork River, across by the Milwaukee Road. E75 and the 3 SD40-2 surrounds the train through the big curve at milepost 1727.5. In our days, two bridges carries here Interstate 90 high above St. Rachel's Valley, but since the interstate have been constructed in 1976 between St. Rachel's and Henderson, it never met the Milwaukee Road's mighty electrics. Now the Little Joe leads the pack along Drexel substation and continues east, via St. Regis, Masula, Deer Lodge, Butte, the Pipestone Pass, the 16 Mile Canyon and Three Forks to Harlotten, the east end of the electrified Rocky Mountain Division of Milwaukee Road's Butte Sound Extension and not yet part of this simulation. While the Milwaukee Road's eastbound leads St. Regis Valley, a Burlington Northern local freight train pulls out of Mullen, Idaho and heads east in front of Lucky Friday Mine nearby. A simulation represents the time period before 1972, as the new main shaft of the mine have not been constructed, which significantly changed its appearance. The train loops up the steep grade at the Idaho side of Lookout Pass. Now the train crosses S-Curve Wireduct, located a little less than two miles southeast of Mullen, Idaho. To maintain a grade below 2.5%, the line have been constructed, including two loops, and stretched around the valleys in the steep mountainous terrain. The train went over Lookout Pass and rolls down at its Montana side. Following the tracks east, the train curves down a spectacular double loop into St. Regis River Valley and continues along St. Regis River north side until Haugen, where the line joins into the Milwaukee Road tracks to St. Regis, where it splits again off the Milwaukee Road tracks to join into Burlington Northern's Ax Northern Pacific's Poundary Secondary Main Line. Both railroads agreed about this trackage sharing after the original Northern Pacific tracks, north side of St. Regis River, have been destroyed by a big flood between St. Regis and Haugen in 1933. Now a westbound train passes Drexel siding and substation number 12. One of four saddleback roof equipped substations at the Milwaukee Road. 
the train led by an EF4. Three SD40-2 and followed by another EF4 continues west, beside St. Regis River. Little Joe E73 laid its train around the big curve at milepost 1727.5, about two miles northwest of Drexel and substation number 12. The train speeds up at Henderson. Two sixty one's power is now two and three quarter miles west northwest of Haugen. West of Hogan, the main line starts its 1.7% climb up the Montana side of St. Paul Pass. The track at the right hand side of St. Regis River is Burlington Northern's ex Northern Pacific's Lookout Pass line, splitting off the Milwaukee Road tracks at Hogan. The train makes up elevation and gets higher above St. Regis River. Now about 5 miles west of Haugen, the train crosses the 13 Girderspan steel trestle at Salt Hills, Montana. Now the train crosses the 8 girder span steel trestle at Dominion Creek and enters into tunnel number 19. While the power moves out of tunnel number 19, the second half of the train is still traveling at the lower track of Dominion Creek Loop. The driver is in a 16th notch as the train travels the last grade and passes along East Portal and substation number 13. And now the job is done. As E73, the 3SD40-2 and E70 soon enters the snowsheds of St. Paul Pass Tunnel and leads the train down to Avery. The caboose crosses East Portal substation and the crew houses and follows the train through St. Paul Pass Tunnel on its way west out of Montana and into Idaho. And within this scheme ends our little virtual view onto Pillarute Mountains train traffic, gone long ago.